What's up, pumpkin heads? Bet you clicked on the thumbnail because of what's in that box. Let's see what we got going on. You're watching Moby Mike Pumpkins on YouTube. All right, guys, got the battery acid, sulfuric acid. It'd be roughly 33 to 36%. Pretty common acid for pH adjusting irrigation water, hydroponic solutions, whatever. So why don't we pan back to, I'm going to show you a little bit about leaf size on the plant and why we're switching to sulfuric acid. And while you guys are watching that, I'm going to go play around and pH adjust some water. We should need less because this has more neutralizing power than nitric acid. I'm going to assume I'm going to need about 10 ounces per tote, maybe a touch more. We'll catch you back over by the watering tanks after you talk about these leaves. All right, guys, let's talk about leaf size a little bit. So here I'm on the back end of my plant. These are where I have some terminated vines, and guess what? You're going to get some big leaves there. It's just because you've terminated the vine, all the nutrients, like the last growing thing on there is, is this leaf. So anyway, it all goes in there, and you get these huge old leaves or whatever, and everyone likes to measure them and show and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you can see these are about 29, 30 inches, which these might not even be done growing yet. You can get them 36. But anyway, that's not the point because those are going to be big. These will be the first leaves to go to crap on this plant too. Mark my word on it. Like these will be the first ones we're cutting off. You know, maybe some of these ones that we got damaged on. But what I want to show you is like coming up here, you know, we get into the plant where, you know, we didn't deadhead a vine or something. Here I got a leaf here about 26 inches and that's a little big. I like around like 18 to 20, but you see not everyone's like that. And I'm just kind of looking at some of these leaves here. You can see how they look kind of puffy. So they look kind of puffy there. So that's telling me we got slightly too big a leaf size in the middle of the plant. Um, some of these newer leaves look a little puffy. That tells me that we're a little high on nitrogen. So we don't want to get too high in nitrogen or every, the cell walls become weak, the bugs attack it, the leaves don't last as long in the fall. So anyway, what we're going to do is cut back on nitrogen. Now one problem we have is we use nitric acid to adjust the pH of our water. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to sulfuric acid. So I got some on order from Napa. We'll get some sulfuric acid. And then the fertilizers that I feed, um, the 4-18-38 is, you know, low on nitrogen compared to the phosphorus and potassium in that. So instead of using the nitric acid to lower the pH, that, that does raise the NPK value of that feed. So then we'll use sulfuric acid. So we'll get some sulfur and we'll keep doing that. So what we got going on is, you know, it's the beginning of July. So now the soil is heated up and all our organic amendments, they're starting to release nitrogen as well as I was adding some nitrogen, which is normally not a problem, but there just got to be a little too much. Now, none of this is excessively bad. This plant still looks pretty good, but what we want to do is get away from the whole plant being giant, puffy elephant leaves, because what will happen is the stalks will rot out of them. Um, the leaves will just be more susceptible to bugs, and then you know, I've always, I've had pretty good luck having late season growth, and we don't want to we don't want to swap that growth now and then just ruin the plant in the process. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to back off the nitrogen. And I would say probably even in a couple of weeks, because like I said, there'll be that big flush of nitrogen, probably in a couple of weeks of knocking that feed down and just what naturally is in the soil is going to start becoming less. One thing that growers see a lot in the tissue tests and I have in the past that the sulfur could stand to be higher in the plants. So we get less sulfur from the atmosphere than we used to because all the diesel fuel is unsulfured now. Where we used to have sulfur diesel and then that would come down with the rain and provide a much needed nutrient for the plants. So basically we're a little high in nitrogen so that's why we're going to switch to sulfuric acid for our pH adjustment. And we'll do that until we feel like we can add a little more nitrogen. All right, guys, got the battery acid, sulfuric acid. It'd be roughly 33 to 36%. Pretty common acid for pH adjusting irrigation water, hydroponic solutions, whatever. All right, I'm not going to be Mr. Safety, but, you know, I work with hazardous chemicals on a daily basis. If you're going to do anything, just wear safety glasses. You don't want to get this stuff in your eye, and there's just things they can't do with your eye to bring it back. You know what? You get it on your skin, you probably get a blister, rash, whatnot. You know, worst case scenario, whatever, they can give you a skin graft. But if you screw your eye up, there's only so much they can do. So make sure you're wearing goggles when you're 
playing around with acids and stuff, okay? All right, we're about 750 on the pH meter, which is actually a little low for me. Normally, I, I get closer to 8, so that's before any acid. All right, so I did 14 ounces, and we got to about a 680, 679, somewhere in there. So it's about the same strength or same neutralizing power as the nitric I was using. So we can probably go 16 ounces and be good. I'm not trying to get it like dead nuts perfect, but just trying to get it in a little better range for everything. And, and then now we can add a little sulfur instead of a little nitrogen and help out with our high nitrogen problem. So there you go. Yeah, it's getting down there. But yeah, I think uh, 16 ounces would be good for a tote. Well, it's after work now, and I've done my first watering with uh, the pH adjusted water with the sulfuric acid, and the plant looks absolutely beautiful. A lot of times when you feed like a new fertilizer, you can kind of notice on the plant, you're like, oh yeah, that looks a little better. But when you feed the same stuff over and over again, sometimes you don't see that. So I don't know that the plant was necessarily sulfur deficient, but you know, it probably just gave it a little sulfur and she just looks real nice today. So that's great. And I, I did calibrate my pH pen. It was off a little bit. We can use a little less than I had anticipated because it was a little more than I had calculated. So I double checked my pH pen and yeah, about 10 ounces for total water for me is good to bring it down and, and we could go more. And what I had added uh, wasn't too much. It just puts me in that range where you don't want to ever tip over the edge. If you neutralize all the alkalinity out of there, then it, then it reaches a tipping point because all of a sudden you're going to be going down a little bit, going down a little bit, going down a little bit, and then boom, it's just going to drop like a rock if you neutralize all the alkalinity. So I just I just want to add a preset amount so I don't want to push the line of how much I can add so I don't ever tip over that that threshold and have something really low pH go out onto the plant. So plant looks good. Sulfuric acid's working. Doing awesome. I, I think I need to work on my scale. I got a cord that I think is bad, but looks like she's doing about 28 day, pounds a day right now, so not too shabby. All right, I got my scale head apart. I think I found the problem on why it's not reading right. Here's the cable that goes into there. If that'll focus, you can see that that has got a nick there and the cord's kind of flat. Something dropped on there, pinched there. What it did was it messed the wire up inside there. Because whenever I bend the wire there, it would uh, jump 60 to 80 pounds. So, so it wasn't making full contact. So we got a new wire. Anyway, we're going to route that up here and then get it on the scale head. And hopefully that'll fix our scale problems and we can still use the scale for the year. If not, we got a real expensive platform for our scale let's cross our fingers on this looks like yellow red blue black shield i feel like i'm defusing a bomb all right we got her fixed i step on the scale it moves up by my weight um, we know the scale from a four would read a hundred pounds uh, without the pumpkin on it so we got to subtract 100 so that might be hard for you to read so it'd be 170 right now now if i move the cord all over the place it moves by like half pound one pound maybe two pounds, or before if I hit it in the right spot, I'd move by 80. So depending on how the cord was and the heat of the day and whatnot, like it would make the scale readings kind of funky. So now we should have pretty accurate readings. Should be good to go. Scale should be reading correct. So if your people are going, well, it seems kind of light, Mike, that pumpkin that size. From past experience, I don't doubt that the chart is right. The chart is right. When people weigh pumpkins this size at a weigh off, they're older than that and they're probably more denser. When these pumpkins are younger than this, I don't think the chart is right. Because what I've seen previously is that these this young period, like up to like 500 pounds when the pumpkin's like young, it weighs way less than what the scale says. And the gains are actually less than you think they are, even though the chart says you're gaining quite a bit. It isn't until later where I notice that you're actually, then you start gaining what the chart actually says and you're actually gaining actually more than what the chart says later on in the season. So I think just the younger fruit doesn't correlate to the chart so great just because people aren't weighing young fruit. So some people will bring like a pumpkin like this, maybe 100 days old to weigh off, you know, just on a smaller plant or whatever. So so we got scale fixed, pretty pumped about that. And uh, now we just got to grow her. All right, today's the first Sunday after day 20. So we start measuring every Sunday and that's what we do. We keep our weekly total on that. So we got our pumpkin Lizzo here. We got our tape measure. Don't use them dinky tapes that your grandma uses to make quilts. Get yourself a nice big one like this because eventually it's going to be 20 foot around and you'll need a big one. So we'll go ahead and measure this one and we'll record it down and we'll check the numbers out. 45. 
45. And 68. All right, guys, what we came up with numbers then is we have 158 inches, which is 95.5 pounds. That's day 23 on the pumpkin. I did measure it day 20 because day 20 is kind of the day that people start. So three day average, which doesn't mean much. We gained about 51.2 pounds for about 17 pounds a day. So hopefully over the next seven from this Sunday to next Sunday, hopefully we're at least doing like 35 a day. Probably still be ramping up a little bit, but hopefully we're doing 35, 40 a day. 35 for an average would be good, but that would mean that we'd have to be higher than that because we're only doing 17 right now. So... All right, see you next week.